Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create these digital invitation templates to sell on Etsy using Canva. First things first, to be able to create these digital invitations the way I'm going to show you, you are going to need a Canva Pro account and that's because you're gonna be creating a template link which is a Pro Canva feature. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start with a canvas size of five by seven inches. The majority of the invitations that you will see sold on Etsy are five by seven, so that's just a standard invitation size. You will see that to the left there are some pre-made templates. Personally, I would avoid using these because they are other people's work and I just wouldn't want to resell someone else's designs. It's important to remember when you're designing your invitations that you do not use the Pro Canva fonts or the Pro Canva elements. The reason for this is if you do use those, your customers will then need to have a Pro Canva account. Now, not everyone's going to want to pay to have a Pro Canva account, therefore it's best to stick to using the free fonts and personally, I would stick with using elements that you've uploaded yourself and purchased elsewhere. That way you don't have to worry about copyright issues and commercial licenses. My favourite place to find both fonts and elements is a website called Creative Fabrica. Creative Fabrica is very similar to Etsy, however they just sell digital items such as fonts, clip art, digital papers, SVGs, those kinds of things. And every single purchase comes with the commercial license you need to sell things such as digital invitations. You can either buy the bundles individually from the artists or the way that I prefer is you can have the monthly subscription with Creative Fabrica, which I think is around $22, that's US dollars. Um, but for me, that's beneficial because I use it all the time across several different businesses. So with that, you have unlimited downloads. You don't have to purchase anything. It's all within the subscription. And that, again, also includes a commercial license. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just speed up this design process and then I will come back once I have my finished design. Thought that I'd be healing now I didn't think I'd have to feel this now I thought I would have moved on But somehow the feeling's still strong Like I'll be on my way out Thinking that I'm good right suddenly You pass by now you're stuck on my mind Thinking I was done now But I guess I'll never be tired Of you See what you want, see what you roll, cause I wanna know, I wanna know Yeah, I'll be on my way out thinking that I'm good, right? Suddenly you pass by, now you're stuck on my mind Thinking I was done now, but I guess I'll never be tired Of you So now we have our finished invitation design, what I like to do next is I like to go through and lock all of the individual elements. So you don't have to do this step, however I choose to because what it does is it prevents your customer from moving the elements around and it will keep them in place. So they won't be able to change your design nor will they be able to copy the elements and use them on their own designs. 
Once I have finished locking down all of the individual elements, what I will do is I will go ahead and download this as a PNG and it will be that PNG that I will use to create my listing mockups. Moving on, this is how I create my listing images for the invitations. I have found the best way to showcase your digital designs is through using product mockups. The great thing about product mockups is it enables the customer to see how the product will look in person without actually seeing it in person. So, Canva is amazing and there's so many different types of product mockups that they have available. So I just searched for invitation mockup, found a relatively neutral one and then I'm taking the PNG that I saved from the invitation design and I'm putting it onto the canvas. So another way to make it look a little bit more realistic is to add a drop shadow. So what that does is it kind of lifts it off of the screen and makes it look as though it's actually on the image in real life. So you kind of just have a little play with it until you're happy with how it comes out and that's pretty much it in terms of adding the design onto the mock-up. If Canva doesn't have the style of mock-up that you want, you can also go over to Creative Fabrica and search for invitation mock-ups there. Similar to Canva, they'll have thousands and thousands of different product mock-ups, so it's another great place that you can find some. So you're then going to just do the exact same thing that you did with the ones that you found on Canva. So you're going to make it the canvas background and then you're going to add the invitation PNG add the shadow and arrange it until you are happy with the way that it looks. So this is the mock-up that I will use for every single one of my invitation designs. I like to use this as the first image that the customer will see because it's a very neutral design so it can work for every single one of my invitations and it makes the front of my shop look much more uniform. Also on top of the mock-up I have added the little Canva logo and also the words instant download because that then instantly tells the customer what it is that they are going to be getting. The next image that I use for my listing is this computer that says editable template edit download print so I will take a screenshot of my Canva page and I will add that in to the computer frame because that gives the customer a little idea as to how the editing side of it looks. I then also will have an items in the black box can be edited slide and the reason for that is obviously I don't want my customers to be purchasing the design with the intention of being able to move around the different elements. By doing this I can clearly show them that the only things they will be able to edit once they purchase the design will be the text. Another couple of listing images I like to have are a what's included image and that just kind of outlines what the customer will receive so there's no confusion and then I have a brief description of how the purchase will work for the customer. Once I'm happy with all of my listing images what I'll do is I'll just download them as PNGs and they are now ready to use on my listing. Next I'm going to show you how I create my PDF downloadable files. This is the file that the customer will receive when they purchase their invitation design and in the PDF it will contain a link that will then take them to their invitation template. So yours can look however you want it to. Mine is a A4 size and all I did was I searched for a photo of balloons on Canva. I found one that I liked and then I put it at the very top. The reason why I chose balloons is because the majority of my invitations are birthday invitations and what screams birthday more than balloons on a ceiling. Similar to my listing images, I ha also have one of the computer frames put on the first page of the PDF. I like to do this because I will then insert a picture of the design that they purchased so then when they download this file they straight away see the design that they are going to be editing. Okay so now to create the template link. So you want to go back to your invitation design, click share in the top right hand corner and on there you will see a little button that says template link. Once you press that, a link will be created and that will allow you to copy it 
and then go back to your PDF downloadable file and right click and you will then be able to paste your template link in there. Once you have created your template link, you want to always make sure that you test it because obviously you want to make sure that it's going to go to the right place and this is exactly what your customer will see when they click their template link. So another thing that I like to include on my downloadable PDF is a brief explanation on how to edit the template. Not everyone knows how to use Canva so I think it's important to add a brief description on how the customer can edit their design. I also then have a thank you page that has links to my social medias, etc. So once you're happy with how the downloadable PDF looks, you then just want to save it to your computer. So to do that, you just want to click share and then save it as PDF standard. You want to do that because it contains a link and you need to make sure that your link is pressable for the customer. Okay, so now you have your digital invitation created, you have the listing images designed, the PDF file that your customer will download containing the template link, you're now all ready to upload to Etsy. There you have it, that is how to create a digital invitation to sell on Etsy using Canva. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it and that it was helpful. Please make sure you leave a like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.